I bought this inexpensive and really impressive spectrometer and wanted to document how to use it and how I use it to check the wavelength of my lasers because it was tricky to get it working and calibrated. These instructions will be helpful for any of the super cheap DIY spectrometers anyone can make with a CD-ROM or with a diffraction grating and a web camera. I got this one on AliExpress for $71 which includes shipping. It's called the Little Garden Spectrometer. I'll put a link in the description below this video. Although the writing on the spectrometer translates to window sill garden. Before buying it, I watched this review, again, link below, and learned that these are made by Lao Kang, and he hand scrapes off the color Bayer filter to convert a color webcam into a grayscale one. Yikes! So plug in the cable and plug it into your PC. I only know how to do this for a PC. I had to remove some yellow tape to connect the cable. I left the yellow tape on the other opening. I'm probably supposed to take it off, but it works fine with the yellow tape on. It will remove a little of the blue and ultraviolet, I suppose. I then tested using VLC, a free program. I recommend you just go straight to Theramino. Download Theramino here. Link in the comments below. Theramino is a huge suite of applications, mostly not spectroscopy, and it was hard to find the spectrometer app. Once you click on the link, note that we are halfway down a massive web page, so don't get lost. Scroll down to the descriptions of the versions, and just past that is the download link with a zip file. You might have to right click and choose download link, but I just clicked it and it downloaded. I hit Ctrl J to see downloads. This works for most browsers. Then, when it's done, I click the zip file to open it. Double click the folder. Double click the installer application. You might get something like this screen. If you do, click More Info. Click Run Anyway. Click Extract All. Choose where to put it. I don't want it in download, so I remove that. It's installed. Now, double click the folder. Now this is the application. You can double click it to run it, but instead, let's create a desktop shortcut first. Make sure you can see the desktop somewhere, so close or shrink windows until you can see some desktop. Drag the program to the desktop, but before you let go of the mouse, hold down the Alt key and you will see that it changes from Move to Desktop to Create Link in Desktop. If you mess up and move it there, then just drag it back to where it was and start over. Before we start Theramino, plug in your device. The USB cable that came with it was a bit loose and worked great on my laptop, but not on my desktop. For my desktop, I had to use a cable I already had. When you plug in the camera, you should hear a sound. I'm launching Device Manager to make sure the camera shows up. Here it is under Cameras and USB-ZH. Before launching Theramino, make sure that the camera shows up. It's possible the name will be different from USB-CH. Let's show only the desktop with Windows key D, then start Theramino by double-clicking it. I'm sizing the application better for this video. First change the video input device to the spectrometer camera. On my laptop, it also showed the built-in laptop camera. Then click the video controls button. Change the compression to YUY2, as the instructions with the spectrometer say, and uncheck Auto here and slide this to the far right so the value is negative 1. You can point it out a window if it's daytime at this point, and you might see something, as I show here, but instead let's start with the supplied fluorescent light. Plug it in, turn the switch to 1 for on. My fluorescent light takes a full 15 seconds to start to light up. Aim the spectrometer at the light. It has a window on this side. Mine is quite accurately aimed along the axis of the box. You should get something like this. Click the flip checkbox. You should now have flip checked. Run button should be yellow. There should be some spectrum lines visible here. You might want to size this orange box vertically closer to the image, but it doesn't matter much as long as the image data is inside the orange box. Don't bother with the horizontal position, as we will be constantly changing that in a minute as we zoom in and out. 
Now turn on peaks and also turn off colors until we have calibrated. Note this double white line here and this single white line here. Here's the double in the graph and the single in the graph. We'll do the first calibration on those. If your lines are much brighter and overexposed, put the light farther from the spectrometer and adjust the aim point until their brightness is such that you can easily see the double and single bright lines I mentioned. This is a bit overexposed. This is underexposed but great for now. Do Tools, Trim Points, select Trim Points manually. Set the first one to 546.5 which is the brighter mercury line and set the other to 611.6 .6, which is from Europium. This web page is fantastic for finding some good peaks near other spectrum lines if you want to pick points closer to where you care the most, such as in the infrared. I picked peaks 5 and 12. Now you'll see a 547 and 612 here at the top. Make sure peaks is also yellow and dips is off. Drag the 547 to that right side taller mercury peak in that double emission line. I'm going to zoom in by putting the mouse over that peak and scrolling my mouse scroll wheel. Notice that as you scroll, the orange box above also zooms in. You can also make the whole window wider if you want by clicking and dragging the left or right edges of the application. The peak number at the bottom should match the trim point number at the top. These trim points are your calibration points. So now I zoom out until I can see the 612 trim point. I drag it near the other peak and then I scroll, zoom in, and position it perfectly. You are now calibrated. Let's zoom way out and we can enable the colors now. The colors didn't make sense until now. I'm going to turn off the trim points as well by clicking that button. If I point the camera more directly at the light bulb, I can see some lines way out in the infrared. I don't trust these, as they may be a secondary spectrum that is a repeat of the first. This double peak here is suspiciously like the green double peak here. This strong peak here is similar to this orange European peak. This region here is similar to this region here, and so on. I think you can trust everything up to about a thousand nanometers. Let's look at the sun now. Turn off that bulb and point the spectrometer at almost anything out the window. Ideally something white, but a tree, a house, really anything. I'm going to uncheck peaks and check dips as the sun has absorption lines. I'm looking for the hydrogen alpha line as it is almost on top of the same color as some lasers I want to calibrate. This page has a nice chart showing the sun absorption lines, although I could have just googled about hydrogen alpha. Anyway, it is at 656.281 nanometers. So I zoom in on that area. I drag the spectrum a bit to center the hydrogen alpha line. So it seems out of calibration by a nanometer, so we'll calibrate on this one. I go back to the manual trim points and set the second one to 656.3. I drag the trim point until they both say 656. Note that you can only have two active trim points, which is good enough for me, but there is other software that will do more. So now it's time for me to test a laser. Shine the laser at something and point the spectrometer at the same thing. Aim around until you get a nice skinny peak. You can optionally defocus the laser or remove the collimating lens or pass it through an eyepiece or other short focal length lens to get it to spread out, but I just aim the spectrometer kind of roughly in the same direction and it picked up the faint laser light. Enable peaks, disable dips, and trim scale. Here you can see my laser is at 657 nanometers. When I first turn on the laser it tends to be about 3 nanometers lower and within a minute or so settles down as its final wavelength. I have found my cheap laser pointers are usually between 653 and 660 nanometers. Every laser is unique. Just for fun, I switch back to dips and point the spectrometer out the window again, and the H-alpha is still at 656 nanometers. So that's it. 
Have fun with it. Remember this black area is beyond human vision. Try putting a colored gel in front of the detector. Or look at other YouTube videos of people playing with spectrometers. There's hundreds of experiments you can do now such as looking at the phosphors on your cell phone, looking at various types of light bulbs, maybe look at a flame or a glowing hot metal stove or a halogen light bulb, or the infrared light from a remote, maybe even grabbing the spectrum from a carbon star through your telescope. 